Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 44th and Broadway. Our address is 4401 West Broadway. Our regular hours of service are 10 a.m. We have our morning Bible study. 11 a.m. We have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. We have our Sunday evening worship. Also, on Wednesdays, we have midweek Bible study service at 7 p.m. The Western Church of Christ also presents a call-in Bible talk show called More Bible Talk. More Bible Talk is presented on WLLV. That is 1240 on the AM dial. More Bible Talk is presented on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The call-in show allows people to call in and their Bible questions are answered in a Bible manner. The Western Church of Christ also has a website. The website is www.westncoc.com. Feel free to use this website as you can retrieve sermons that are presented from the pulpit. We offer it in video format as well as in audio format and streaming data. With God's permission, I'm going to pull this down a little bit so it won't be glass, my glass is get foggy and I can't breathe. I'll be reading from the book of Psalm, chapter 33, verses 6 through 9, and I will be reading from the NIV, and it reads, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth, he gathers the waters of the sea into jars, he puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. I have just read from Psalm 33, verses 6 through 9. Amen. Amen. song this morning are listed on the board to my left and to my right. The first song of this morning will be page A. That is page A. <coughs> my God and I go in the fields together. We walk and talk as good friends and do. We clasp our hands
Thanks, Free. Holy and righteous Father God of heaven, we thank you for this day that God has given us. Yes. Yeah. For being able to come together and to worship thee in spirit and truth. Yes. Yeah. We honor thy son today, Father. The one yeah. who is our Lord and our Savior. Yeah. Help us, O Father, as we worship your day that the things come from the speaker of today that the pricks our heart. Help us, Father, you remain corrected mm. while we're still breathing. Yeah. Like this, Father God, we are so thankful unto thee that thou art a merciful God. Mm -hmm. yeah. God of love and God of mercy yeah. and all comfort. We pray, Father, for the sick yeah. among us. We pray, O Father, that thou might comfort them in their illness and, and uh, bring them to thy health, be thy prophet, be thy will. Like this, Father God, we also pray for those who are uh, spiritually sick. Mm -hmm. We pray, O Father, that as thy word comes from the speaker today, we pray that it may prick their heart and they might want to become members of thy family. Amen. Like this, Father God, we ask that thou be with us in all things. And in our son Jesus' name we do humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Page 295, 295. On this Lord's day we assemble round the table of the Be sure to mark your song books, page 639, will be the song of invitation after the lesson. Page 639. Now if you would, turn to page 402, and if it's convenient for you, please stand. 402. Where we wish that home and lay Yeah. 
came to be. Amen. He commanded that it stood firm. Amen. Now, I want you to, to recognize the power of God. He spoke his creation, the creatures that are here, he spoke all things into existence. He, he breathed into the nostrils of man after forming him from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils and made him a living being. The voice of God. Now what we need to understand is we as parents or even going to look at those that do not have children, but you are a child, your mother and your father created you by the will of God, by the power that, that he instilled into mankind. But you can, you can say, you can vouch for, that when we talk to our children, our children do not always follow our commands. We have not always followed our parents' command. But everything that God speaks to, according to his will, will follow his command. And I had to say that last part because we know how stubborn we are. Mm -hmm. We know how sinful mankind is. But his creation, the Bible says again, for he spoke and it came to be, he commanded and it stood firm. He, the God that we're talking about, is the God that, that, that composed of the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going we're gonna to examine what the Bible says this morning, and we're going to look through the rest of the month, we're going to not look at only what God has done, but we're going to also look at God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have looked at them before. We need to continue to look at them because it's because of them that we are here. In the book of Genesis chapter 17 and the verses 1, realizing again who God is. Genesis chapter 17 and the verse is 1. When Abraham Abram was 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Walk before me and be blameless. Here God is revealing himself to Abraham and telling him, I am God Almighty. What does that really mean? Here's what it means, that he don't need anybody. He don't need anybody to do anything for him because he's doing everything for everybody. That's a wonderful God, isn't it? Amen. That's a God that, that we can depend on. That, that's a God that, that we can put our hope in, our trust in. It's a God that, that we realize, you know, as we go through the scriptures, it's a God that we realize that can save us from whatever condition or whatever situation we've gotten ourselves into. He'll save us. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1, in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, again, we need to recognize when we start talking about God in many cases, it's talking about the three. But we find here in Hebrews chapter 1, in verse 1, long ago and in many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God. <coughs> in the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. A wonderful God we serve. Amen. A powerful God we serve. He upholds everything. Yeah. Why not put your trust 
and him. You all are familiar with the commercial, you're in good hands with all state. All state will let you down. All state will let you down. Now, you know, you, you may have all state. You may say, they, they have always done good by me. But there's somebody out there that has been denied a claim by all state. God does not deny claims. He, he upholds us. He, he sustains us. Because he's our God, so therefore, when we put our trust in him, we need to realize again, he will not let us down. The Bible says he's not slack concerning his promises that some men count slackness. That's our God. When he promises something, he is going to keep that promise. Let us recognize and let us understand who God is. Turn, if you would, to the book of Job, chapter 38. Job, chapter 38. See, the things that, that God has done, man, that somehow or another cannot comprehend these things. We need to realize again that he is God. Mm -hmm. He is God. And we're going to read here from Job 38, verses 1 down through verse 11. Because again, when we hear the word of God, not just a reading of the scriptures, but when we hear the word of God, well, what it meant is that God spoke, we should pay attention to it. Because it's for a reason that it is here. Amen. He says in Job 38, the verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, He was steeped in the wind. He said, and he said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Who is this that, that darkens, listen to it, that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Rest for action like a man. I will question you, and you will make it known to me. Now, when, when God starts questioning you, you need to back up. You need to realize that, that the questions that God asks, God already knows the answer. You know, how many parents have asked their children something and you've already known the answer and they just stand right there and look you dead in your eye and lie to you? When God asks a question, God already knows the answer. The Bible says in verse 4, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined the, the measurement Surely you know. Surely. Or well, who stretched the line upon it? Or what what the what were its base is sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds in his garment and thick darkness in his swaddling band. Listen to it. And prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors. And said, Thus far shall you come no further. And here shall your proud ways be saved. This is God answering Job. Now, does God have to give us an answer? No. God doesn't have to answer to us. We have to answer to him. Amen. When he asks these questions of Job, there, there is no answer because Job don't know. See, there's no harm in not knowing, but do not question what God has done. Do not blame him for what we have done. Keep moving forward. Keep trusting in him. Keep believing in him. For he is the creator of all things. He did not have to sit down with us and ask us, how do you want this done? How do you want that done? He, he did not ask man anytime, anywhere. Because man was not created. Where do you want your eyes to be? 
Where do you want your ears to be? Where, where do you want your mouth or your nose to be? God did not ask man that. God said to the Son, let us create man in our image. And he created man holy. Created man holy. And we need to accept that. And continue to believe and continue to trust in a living God. The power of God. Power of God. Again, in Genesis, I mean, in, in Psalm 19, in Psalm 19, have to always, in, at least I do, have to go back to the creation. Because that's where it all began. I said it. Not where God began, but where it all began. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. And so we find here in, in Psalm 19, verse 1, he said, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their word to the end of the world. In them, he has set a tent for the sun. Now, I, I can look out the, the window here and I can see that the sun is not shining bright. Did, did you hear what I said? The sun is not shining bright, but it is shining. How do I know it's shining? Because it's daylight outside. Mm -hmm. And that is why he created the sun, in order to have light by day. He, our God, he, he did that for us. He doesn't need sun. He doesn't need the moon. He doesn't need the stars. He knows everything. He knows where everything is. In darkness, he knows where everything is. In light, he knows where everything is. He doesn't need it. But he created it for you and I. So therefore, we need to continue to recognize his power. How he, he developed these things. How he created these things. So that we can survive upon this earth. We find in the book of Exodus, chapter 13, you can go back and, and read uh, uh, above that and well, but we come to 13. At the end of that, the end of 12, coming to 13, we recognize the deliverance of God, that God is able to deliver. How many times have you gotten yourself uh, into trouble? You, you, you've been surrounded by a gang of people. And here you are. Standing there, so you thought all by yourself. All by yourself. There you stand. But some, somehow or another you got away. I remember getting into an incident when, when I was in high school and, and these boys, and here we are, we're, we're having a good time. So I said. When the boy ran home and and to get his daddy and tell his daddy about what was happening. And his daddy said, you go down there and you tell your brother to come home right now. I just want you to know those boys that ran home after daddy said come home, those boys were saved. They were delivered. They listened to the voice of their father. And I want us to look here and I want us to examine the power that God has to deliver his children out of trouble. It says in, in Psalm, uh, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 12, verse 50, all the people of Israel did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. And on that very day, the Lord brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their host. The Lord said to Moses in chapter 13, the Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever it is the first who opened the womb among the people of Israel, both the man of a beast, it is mine. It's mine. See, see, God had a right to it. Because he's God. Well, what he asked for, he should get. It says in verse 3, that Moses said to the people, 
Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. By the strong hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. By the power, by the strong hand of the Lord, he delivered his children out of slavery. Power, power. You go back and, and you look at where God told Moses, you go and you tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And we know Pharaoh made it into a joke. Okay, I'll do it. But he didn't. And after ten plagues, after ten plagues, he said, I, I guess I, I need to wake up. I said, I need to realize that this is God. And here we find that the children of Israel were delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh. But we know that's not the end of the story. God continued to deliver his children. He continued to, to protect his children from Pharaoh and his army and allow them to be drowned. He tells about Pharaoh and the army to be drowned in the Red Sea. God is a deliverer. He has power. Again, going to, to Psalm 29 and listening and talking about the voice of God. Psalm 29, verse 3 through 9. Psalm 29, verses 3 through 9. Listen to it again as we understand the power of God. In his voice, there is power. There is power. Verse 3 of Psalm 29, the voice of the Lord is over the water. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to, to skip like a calf. And Sharon, like a young wild ox, the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare and the temple all oh, cry. Glory. Just by his voice. When he yells out and speaks, what did everybody do? They listen. It's not true either, is it? It's not true. But when God speaks, we find that people, things, they heed to what he says. See, is this too hard to accept? That there is somebody that is more powerful than anybody. Amen. God. Amen. How can man say that there is no God? Well, it's not so much as man, but it's the fool that says in his heart that there is no God. How can you open your eyes and, and really honestly say that there is no God? Can we do what God has done? No, we cannot do that. So let's accept it. Let's accept it. In the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, I know there's a lot of scriptures that, that we can look at to talk about the power of God. This is just a few. And I believe that if we would honestly look at them and allow them to, to soak in and to go back and, and, and you know, cross-reference these things, we will say that there is a God and I need to follow him. In Daniel chapter 4, Daniel chapter 4, we know what type of king Nebuchadnezzar was. We, we find it here, Daniel 4, verse 34. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and by reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives 
forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. And he does according to his will among the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? Nobody. Nobody but nobody can challenge God. Amen. And we. Nobody. So why does man try? Why, why does man try to, to put himself on the level of God or even above God? Why does man do that? Because of his ignorance. Because of his stubbornness. Because of his foolishness. Man needs to settle down and realize the power of God. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, again, we recognize not, not just the power of God the Father, but also the power of God the Son. We recognize it by what the Scripture says. And we accept those things, and therefore we can say that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 19. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working, working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Again, when we look at the power of God, who sent his son to die for the sins of the world, who allowed him to be crucified, who allowed him to be buried, who raised him on the third day. The power of God. Now, how many people do you know that, that proclaim to have some type of power and you challenge them and you say, if you have that type of power, let's go to the hospital. Let's, let's go to the graveyard. Let's see what type of power you really have. You know, they come up with all kinds of excuses. I don't have time right now. But I, I have some business over here. Or are those people in the hospital don't have enough faith. No, that's not, that's not the case. The case is they have no power. God has the power to, to resurrect the dead. God has the power to heal the lame, to cause the blind to see, the deaf to hear. God has that power. Amen. And we need to accept that. God has the power over life and over death. Amen. God has that power. And I believe that we need to honor him, we need to glorify him, and we need to continue to respect him for who he is. Mm -hmm. Not us, but because of who he is. In Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, for I am the first and the last and the living one I die and behold I live forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades that's the power that is some power he has the keys how many times have, have you thought that you had the right key in your hand and you tried to open the door and it didn't open? Because you had the wrong key. Or you tried to open your automobile and you had the wrong key. Or it wasn't your automobile, it was just one that looked like yours. Let us know again, our God is all-powerful. And as we talk about him being all-powerful, we need to accept that he has the power to save. Amen. Paul, as he, as he preached the gospel, as he wrote 
to, to the church of Rome. There he, he wrote in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 15. Romans chapter 1 and the verse 15. You know, I like this verse, and, and I like it because it is true. It, it holds true, and, and we need to look at it. We need to say, I too want to be like Paul. Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 15. I, I like it in the King James Version, verse 15, because it says, as so much as in the ill. Here it says, so I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. See, as a preacher, wherever you go, wherever we go, we need to be ready to preach the gospel. To let people know who God is. We, we look at the scriptures and we understand from Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, you can't get anybody to trust or believe in God if you don't tell them about God. How many times that when you were growing up, how, how many times did your friends want to go home with you because they had no food at their house? But they knew about you. Maybe because somebody else told them or maybe because they had already witnessed those things and they wanted to go with you. Here Paul is said, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are at Rome also. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. You know, we talk about the power of God. He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The power of God. So we look at the power of God in delivery. We look at the power of God in creation. We look at the power of God in his voice. We look at the power of God. Well, he doesn't need anybody else because he stands alone. We look at the power of a resurrection. We look at the power of a death. Now we're looking at the power of God unto salvation. Oh man, it's, it's funny. Because when you go and you look at the scriptures and, and many things that we look at in the scripture were done for a reason so that people may believe. Man still believes, you know, that, that you can touch somebody and heal them. Man still believes in speaking in tongues. Man still believes in the interpretation of tongues. Man still believes in all those things. You even have those people that are out there handling these venomous snakes and getting bit and dying because they believe that those things are still possible. They do not believe in the power of salvation by being obedient unto the gospel, that being washed in the watery grave, that their sins are washed away. They don't believe that. They don't believe that. Amen. But that's what the Bible teaches. Amen. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The life figure, whereas through baptism does now also save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience for God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we need to believe. And as we believe this, we teach this. Because somebody somewhere needs to hear it. You know, I love it when somebody tells, says, you know, when you're trying to show them in God's word what the word says, especially when we start talking about baptism, and they say, well, you know, now I need my Bible. I'll be right here. I'll wait for you to go get your Bible. Because somehow or another, the Bible that you're holding is too hard for them to understand. Same version, but it's too hard for them to understand. As though their Bible is reading something different. You wait for it. Tell them to open up their Bibles and look what the Bible says in Acts chapter 22, verse 16, in, in reference to having your sins washed away. Ananias told Saul, why perish thou? Arise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Baptism saves. Baptism is what puts us into Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. We need to do what's right. We need to recognize the power of God. Yes, God can save whosoever he pleases. But you know how he saves man today? By man being obedient unto his word. Man. Question, right? What about the man that's on a desert island? How did that man get to that island? 
How did that man come to be? See, we need to just, when they ask a question, ask them a question. And let them scratch their head instead of you scratching yours. Because the Bible tells us, according to the Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you to the end of the age. So parents, don't, don't let your children leave home without teaching them the gospel. You, your children say, well, I'm tired of what's going on here. This pandemic is just getting to me. People are just not getting along. I'm going to move to a desert island. Teach them the word of God before they leave. What about that man on the desert island? Who let him go? Who let him go without the knowledge of God? See, everybody is going to have to stand before the judgment throne. Hebrews 9, 27 says, It's appointed of the man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Even that man on the desert island, he's going to have to give account of what he's done. If you're here this morning, and you recognize the power of God, and you have not put Christ on through baptism, don't leave here. Don't leave here wondering whether or not you're saved. Leave here knowing that you're saved. Come and make that confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Being immersed in the watery grave, rising to walk a newness of life. Maybe you're straight away and you want to come back. What's holding you down? I don't see any ropes on anybody in here just tying them to the chair. If you need to come to Christ this morning, if you need to come back to him, do so. For he's ready to forgive your sins those that are alien sinners. He's ready to forgive your sins, those that have erred away. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess your faults to him, he's just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. Amen. So if you're here this morning and you're subject to the invitation, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. I can hear my Savior calling
For the mighty counsel that you have sent us, uh, your son Jesus, Heavenly Father, uh, teach us to reach out to those uh, who are lost and hopefully uh, we will bring them into the light, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes. Uh, thank you for our ministers, uh, yes. uh, the workers of this flock, Heavenly Father, and all the brothers and sisters that are here today, Heavenly Father. Uh, thank you for another blessing, again, another year to reach out. Heavenly Father, in your son, name Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.